cleaning today. I don't have any makeup on. Happy Valentine's Day. And it's switching the room up and I made the bed into a twin because it's a, it's a day bed that would make it into a king and it took up the whole room. And I'm probably gonna get a little desk so I don't like do all my work in bed because <laughs> that's what I was ending up doing. I'm gonna redo this one. Thank God. For February 14th. He said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched out his hand and his hand was restored. Mark 3, 5. One of the most powerful customs in the church takes place during the wedding ceremony. As the couple begins to exchange their vows, first the man takes the woman's hand. After declaring his promises, they must turn loose and release each other before the woman in turn takes the man's hand in hers. The power and the symbolic action is profound. It signifies the freedom of choice and the joining of two lives. There is no coercion or force. One freely chooses, releases, and then allows the other to freely choose. The action of the greater importance than joining the covenant of marriage is the shape of all life, embracing and loosing. We grasp and we let go. We take and we relinquish. We close and we open. The symbol of the hand closing its fingers around another hand is familiar to us who yearn and, and churn to get and keep. But the other motion is harder and less familiar to turn loose to release let go and allow the other to stay or depart the unclasped hand is open vulnerable and makes an invitation not a fist or a wrestler's hold christ has open hands open arms eager and willing to unfold and comfort and hold us close as long as we wish, but he will not clasp or grasp us without our willingness to be embraced. Our lives are made up of countless openings and closings, of receivings and takings. Our recovery program works the same way. It is ours for the taking, never there to take us. O oh Christ, you open our, your hands to me and you embrace me when I ask. Keep me opening and embracing in the best way possible. Amen. I'm going to read um, my four-letter word poem, which is... <laughs> I made the point of calling the poem the four-letter word because love is also a four-letter word. That four little word. It's never in vain. It all matters, no matter how small an act. A kind word, a smile, a hug, a cup of cold water. I have it in a photograph, a letter, a scrap of paper, a meal, a memory, a bowl of chili, chicken salad, peach ice cream and red velvet cupcakes, chocolate and roses. It speaks your language. It's a gift. A movie, a lightsaber, a new hope. It's a verb, it's a noun, it's an adjective, it's profound. It's encouragement and motivation. It's harder than you thought, yet it makes everything easier. Like E.T. it phones home. It's more wonderful than you knew and worth everything you put in. It hangs on, it never quits. Even if you let go of it, it can hurt sometimes. It can't stay mad. It works and tries. It bleeds and cries and doesn't lie. It apologizes, gives and forgives. It's the only thing we take with us when we die. Yet it makes us feel alive. It always hopes, believes, trusts. It never fails. And even if you're away a while, it waits for you to come home. That's from Red Poems, which is not out yet. Pray for me to find a publisher. Um, and I'm letting go. My kids are all grown. 
I love them. Y'all have my number. Happy Valentine's Day. Bye.